inside the outdoors. Three riders entered the 250 class, and all three experienced the harsh reality of motocross. Martian is not doing what he expected to. This sucks. Justin is really not happy. I feel bad for him. We are in Texas, and he's a proud Texan, and I think you'll see the best he can give today. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Something has happened to Blake Ward. Didn't even finish the second moto. Had a DNF. Tough break for Weimer. He's been struggling a bit outdoors this year. There's guys that are mentally, they're just not ready when the gate drops. And you're one of those guys right now. In this episode, we meet three new riders. South African Tyler Rattray, Geico Power Sports rookie, Colorado's own Eli Tomac and the Scottish sensation, Dean Wilson. I, don't I know. Feel good at all. It's okay. You fought, dude. You fought. Tyler Attray is one of Pro Circuit's premier riders. The South African, like most foreign riders, had a dream to race in America. This is Tyler's second season racing the Outdoor Nationals. Last year, his expectations were not fulfilled due to injury. Struggles have been no stranger to Tyler. They have been with him since childhood. Well, my mom and uh, father split up when I was about three years old. And uh, then my mom met my stepdad. He pretty much coached me when I was five years old, learning to ride a dirt bike, and he gave up a lot of his time for me to come over here and race in America. And yeah, I think if it wasn't for him and one of my big sponsors in South Africa, then uh, I don't think I would be here today because we financially didn't have the money to really even go to the shop and get food. Yeah, when we came in from school, we used to just have cereal for lunch because there wasn't any food in the house. My plan was to come here and race for Mitch's team because I know he's the best team here in America in the large class. So Mitch said to me, when you win a world championship, then you can come over and race for my team. Remarkably, Tyler did just that, winning the 2008 World Championship. I think Mitch likes guys that work hard. And the guys that don't work hard, he makes suffer. <laughs> but they should. That's how I look at it. Everyone's going to be out there. Everyone's going to be hurting. It's just the guy that can suffer the most is going to win. That's the best. Cycling into headwind and feeling that burn. I love it. Feels so good. Just makes you stronger. Huh? Here comes the Styler. Tyler Rattray trying to scrape and climb his way back in the championship contention. At High Point Raceway, the number 28 captured his first overall of the year. Overall number 28, Tyler Rattray! My main goal is to go to the race and stand on top of the podium. That's what I work so hard for during the week and spend hours on, on my bicycle. And to reward myself on the weekend by winning, that's, uh, that's a relief. When I was a kid, I never thought I would have a life like this. That's why I'm happy with everything I've got today. I know everything that I've got here, I've worked hard for and put my life on the line at a lot of races. It just feels great to come this far in the sport at such a professional level. I definitely can't thank my parents enough for, for doing what they've done. Tyler Rattray enters round four at Bud's Creek Raceway. As usual, his lifelong companion is at his side. That was pretty good. You look good. I think it was seven. If I was 201, you were 202 or something. Take your shirt off. Cool down. Well, Wayne's my stepdad, so he's grown up with me since I was five years old. He was uh, a racer himself in South Africa. That corner where I was, after the finish, that right hander, you were a little bit, uh, you should adjust. Thanks for joining us as we celebrate another Father's Day weekend from here at Bud's Creek. You gotta keep your eye on the number 28 of the former world champion, a South African rider. The number 28 is second in points behind his teammate, Christoph Purcell. Thailand tends to repeat last week's win, a difficult task in a field so deep. 
Kristoff Purcell. He's changed his clothes and Superman is on it here today. Barsha now goes into the number three. Eli Tomac is dropped into the number four. So he has gone two to four. Rattray in five. Ah! Tomac had a slow one this last time around. And Tyler Rattray is right on his rear wheel. Oh boy. He's going on the backside of Tomac. And it's going to be close. He's got the drive. And Eli Tomac, he got hit by a kicker. And now Tyler Rattray. Tyler Rattray has made the move. And I have to say, this guy is the guy that seems to get into the groove in the first 15 minutes and then really turn it up. Purcell still holds on to the number one ride. The battle is for the number two position. Come on! Max Anstey is trying to hold off the Kawasaki competitor of Tyler the Tyler Rattray. Caution flag is down. Anstey hit the deck, and that puts Tyler Rattray into the number two position. And Christoph Purcell has won photo number one here today. Into the number two position, Tyler Rattray. The heat and the sun is playing torture on this racetrack and its riders. Ice Creek is a pretty weird track the way the weather is because it's in a hole, so the humidity sits in that hole. So I would say it's, if not the same heat as Texas, maybe a little bit warmer. You want your towel? Drink up. Got some left in you for the second motor. Second race is going to be all about fitness. Brad Trey coming off a great weekend. Confidence is the key and so many of these races, if you know you can do it, you will. So far this season, the number 377, Christoph Purcell, has been the most dominant, especially in the first motos. The second motos, on the other hand, are another issue. Will Hahn into the number one spot with Wilson now to the number two position. Barsha and Wharton and Purcell and Rattray. Rattray showing something here, a little something something for Purcell. One of the carbon copy things we've seen about Tyler. The second half of the moto is when he finds that group. The Tyler Rattray said enough is enough. The 28 of Tyler Rattray has now gotten around the 377 of Christoph Purcell. Wilson way out in front now. He is pulled away. The 17 of Justin Barsha, and you are right. Tyler Rattray is closing in. Tyler Rattray trying to get around Justin Barsha. And it's gotten closer to him. Tyler Rattray goes on to the inside. Rattray has the advantage, but Justin Barsha. Ow! And all of a sudden, Rattray goes over the berm, into the soft stuff, and it's over. And Dean Wilson has won his first ever overall. He didn't like Tomac, Tomac, he would have put the overall. Spot. That was Freeze. awesome. The was awesome the he had a great run at it, finishing third overall. Let's hear it for none other than Tyler Rattray! Made a mistake and jumped off the track, and that's what cost me another overall. So, yeah, I was really bummed about that. First time for an overall win, 108, Dean Wilson! The talent pool deepens with Dean's win. In the last four races, there have been four different winners. Coming up next. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Toyota Trucks National at Thunder Valley! Rookie Eli Tomac returns to his home state of Colorado. Oh, God, did he crash? I think he did. Tomac in ninth. Oh, he's throwing the anchor, Eli. This year, Geico Power Sports acquired Colorado rookie Eli Tomac to their race team. The Tomac name is legendary in the action sports world. His father, John, was perhaps the most famous racer in a similar two-wheeled sport. My dad, John Tomac, pretty much a legend of the mountain bike world. I think if you set up a really wide uh, entry and then did a quick pivot, you might even be able to get underneath guys. It really doesn't affect me, you know, having my dad as John Tomac. I just, uh, you know, he's just my dad. And I think you can do that down in this corner down here, too, before those, these other rollers. He definitely just knows what to do with me and how to train it. He's kind of a been there, done that kind of guy for me, so I definitely think that'll help me throughout my pro career. At round one, the first race of Eli's career, he did the unthinkable. 
Eli Tomac is breaking camp on these guys. Nobody has ever showed up at their first outdoor national and won their opening national. It would be a landmark day today. He just did outstanding there and was able to go 3-1 and you know win the first national, which was incredible. Welcome to the big time. <laughs> Eli Tomac doing his best to serve notice that last week wasn't a fluke. Tomac continues to lose spots on the track. Rounds two, three, and four were a little harder on him, so we got a little reality check with those. Eli Tomac back in the field, a tough break for the youngster. A little bit of the magic's worn off. So now we're back in Colorado. Uh, we're from Cortez, Colorado, which is about seven hours from here at the Lakewood track, but still it's, the climate's very similar. 211 and Weimer was 211 flat, Eli was 211.3. Well, segment one, you're the fastest. Segment two is the problem. You're a second and a half behind yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Toyota Trucks National at Thunder Valley. Early in the year, we're only on round number five. We're not quite halfway through the 12 race series. Next week at Red Bud, we'll be at the halfway mark. No one can leave points on the table today. Christoph Purcell comes across the front of his teammate. And we've got a massive pile up. Oh, God, did he crash? He's on the inside of that pile up. No, that's Barsha. Eli Tomac is on a little bit of a surge right now. He's coming up on Cole Seeley. Now he's back and back around the ninth or 10th spot. Oh, he got him. Yeah, he got him. Now he's going to have to clear track. Hey, look at that, 214. Starting to get those guys. That, when he sees them, he's going to get off home. Look at Barsha coming to the top of the hill. He's starting to make his way up after going down. Purcell has moved away from Dean Wilson effortless as he cruises around his facility. Six, seven. I think Eli's eight. Then we see Eli Tomac, 243. Check and flag out for your winner, Christoph Purcell. 57. Halfway through the first lap, he was 15. Not bad with the start. Were you close to that crash? Yeah, the second turn? Yeah. I actually kind of blogged off the start. He didn't really get a very good start. He said he maybe spun a little bit after he crossed over the gate. Hey, the other line that wasn't really working very well was in the little tight switchbacks into the little whoop section. All right, that was good. Seven, it could totally flip. Yeah. You could end up on the podium easy. Yeah, oh yeah. You know how those second motos are. Moto number two, 250 class. Can Purcell do a repeat and take it back to back? It's time to buy! Justin Barsha, Eli Tomac. So some teammates and some buddies all trying to get this one sorted out. Purcell is pulling away from Kennard. Tomac in ninth. Oh, he's throwing the anchor, Eli. 224. Effortless across the finish line. Christoph Purcell takes moto number two. Points leader Christoph Purcell's struggles with second motos appear to be over as he went 1-1 in Colorado. All right, take it easy. Too, brother. Yeah, we'll see ya. Yeah, I don't really feel like um, we need to be winning right now. I mean, obviously, that would be nice, but you just need to keep your head together when you get past, you know? Every time you get past, you lose. It's like you lose two or three seconds immediately. There's something to be said for having to work for it, having to deal with adversity. You kind of can't part it in 25 minutes. The deal, I just try to help him as a former professional athlete to realize that, you know, sometimes it might take a month or a year to make improvements, especially when you're at the top level of sport. Well, we can deal with that. You need to just fight a little more, you know, when you're in those close spots. Yeah, it's not necessarily going to come all that easy. Coming up next, Dean Wilson heads to Redbud to take on the field. He's showing the rookie speed that everyone expects out of a rookie, but he's also showing the consistency, too. Like he's there every week. And the leader is Dean Wilson, number 108. Kennard starts the reel in on the 108. Oh! The 
Inland Empire, Southern California. A typical neighborhood at first glance, but for a kid that dreams of becoming a motocross sensation, this is the Mecca. Most champions have lived in this area from one time or another due to its proximity to the race factories. 18-year-old Scotsman Dean Wilson is literally walking in their footsteps. The journey to get to where I am now wasn't an easy one. I mean, I grew up in Scotland, and it was always my dream to race in California and live here and be a factory rider one day. And uh, for it to finally happen is pretty awesome. I mean, I'm living the California dream. In order to make his dreams a reality, Dean walked into the Pro Circuit headquarters unannounced to confront the most feared team manager in motocross. I didn't want to go in and talk to Mitch, but I just went for it. I was sweating, and I'm, my palms were so sweaty. He's just staring at me, not saying anything, and I'm like freaking out. I'm like, God, I don't know what else to say. He actually done that on his own without any help from my wife or I. He wanted on the best team, so he presented himself, and I think Mitch appreciated that. I waited like three weeks after that to get the phone call if I got the ride or not, and finally I got a phone call and I got the ride. Man, I was jumping all over the place. I was so happy. You know, he had a lot of good riders he had to pick, but he picked me. I don't know why. You know, I told him I never give up, and I always work my hardest, so. That sold him, maybe, who knows? He'll never tell you either. It's been going awesome. I am thoroughly impressed with him. I mean, he's never been to any of these tracks. It's his first outdoor season. I think at the riders' meeting, they're going to have to let these riders like Dean Wilson know they're just rookies and they're not supposed to show up some of the elder <laughs> statesmen of this class. He's showing the rookie speed that everyone expects out of a rookie, but he's also showing the consistency, too. Like, he's there every week. Wilson way out in front now. He is pulling away. Highlights, for sure, Bud's Creek. And Dean Wilson has won his first ever overall here in these United States of America. The biggest thing about him is he's determined. I mean, if he gets in a battle, he's going he's gonna to win. And uh, that's what's most inspiring for me to watch and, and be a part of is he's, he's never going to give up. Gate drops, and in at turn number one they go. What color is it? And it's a gang of green up front. Number one, okay. It is still Dean Wilson holding on to the number one rod, but guess what? Trey Kennard has moved into the number two position. He has gone by. Tyler Rett Trey. So the Iceman cometh. Kennard starts the reel in on the 108. The passing attempt by Kennard. Oh! Up alongside Dean Wilson, and Kennard takes away the lead. Trey Kennard, he crosses the stripe. Dean Wilson closes the deal into the number two position. Canard overall, you're second. You're Chris second. third. Yeah, I was fine. I, don't I know. Feel good at all. It's okay. You fought, dude. Okay. You fought. Canard was just on a mission. I mean, he was. He rode awesome. Hats off to him. He put an awesome pass on Dean. It was a good, aggressive, clean pass. It was, and he just, uh, he beat him. Good job, Trey. Awesome ride. In his third year in the 250 class, Trey Canard captured his first overall win. The season is half over, and the unpredictable outdoor nationals have produced five different winners in six rounds. But one win alone is not good enough. As they say, consistency wins championships. At first, it may have seemed a little bit easier than expected. You go out there and win your first race, and you know, you're at the top. And really, all you can do from there is, you know, go down. A two-week break allows our riders to return home as they attempt to maintain a normal life. I got my first kid on the way, so yeah, things are gonna change in life. I'm gonna be a dad for the first time. She's definitely not gonna be a motocross rider. It's been a dream of mine to have my own family, because that's too dangerous. Look how small this thing is, man. <laughs> that's crazy. I've spoken to a lot of my friends that have got kids back in South Africa, and they say winning a national, going 1-1, is there's no better feeling than having a little kid, so. I'm definitely looking forward to it. And this is all the outfits. Ta -da. Mommy loves me. Daddy loves you more. Got a little uggies. Yeah, I came from nothing, and uh, yeah, to give my daughter this is, is really awesome. When I was growing up, it was pretty tough. If she wants something, she needs to work hard for it. I don't really think of racing every day of my life. I also have a normal life that I want to live. I just don't want to 
put my mind on racing and uh, during the week I do my work and then after that there's, I've also got a normal life that I live. That's how it's done. Yeah, I think if you're almost too serious sometimes, it kind of like burns you out a little bit because you're just so serious and you're focusing on racing and then sometimes you just got to take a break and then you'll go back to motocross and you'll be so amped up and excited. Should we wrestle for the camera? Wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you want to watch this wrestle? I will seriously beat this crap in my dad. <laughs> Stop! That's not a step. <laughs> Being a jokester is always like good and stuff. I mean, it's it's fun, but you gotta know when to crack a joke. <laughs> Stop. Stop! You're too rough. <laughs> He knows to, to keep at this level, but he has to work hard and he can't be your typical teenager. And it's a shame really because he misses out on being a, a typical teenager, but on the other hand, he loves what he's doing, so that makes up for it. He almost seriously killed me. Stop, man. <laughs> yes! <laughs> that is sweet, man. Next time on The Modem, Inside the Outdoors. We return to the 450 class to crown a champion and hear closing statements on the season. Mike Les is not going anywhere. It's not something I retire from. It's in your vein. Tonight at 11, the daily...